Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you the PID line follower that I made in a previous video in action as well as suggest some sample K values. So this video serves as an extension of a previous video that I published not quite a year ago which went in detail about how to make your own PID line follower. And if you want to know how to do that I recommend you go watch that previous video. I won't explain how to make it here. This video serves to show you the line follower in action and also suggest some sample K values. And the reason for this is I left uh, video footage of the line follower working in the last video because the last video was over 20 minutes long and as it is I wasn't sure that everyone was going to watch it. So I tried to get it as short as possible and it turned out being over 20 minutes. So this is kind of like a part two if you will of that video. I'm going to show you the line follower and I'm also going to be giving you some sample K values that you could use as a starting point and adjust from there because in the other video I also didn't give you any K values I only gave you the, the procedure to uh, find them but time and time again I've been getting a lot of questions about uh, people having trouble adjusting the K values and getting them just right and it is pretty tricky because some of them are either really uh, small numbers or just kind of obscure so I'll be giving you a starting point for that right here in this video so let's get to it here is my PID line following program now I'm not going to show you how to make this program today because I already have another video that I released about a year ago which is dedicated to teaching you how to make the program. But for this video our focus is going to be these three variable blocks right here. The KP, the KI, and the KD. Because I've gotten a lot of requests on um, how to adjust these values. Now adjusting these values is also something that I explained in this last video but I want to emphasize that there's a lot of trial and error involved and that it's not easy to adjust these values. As a matter of fact, it's very time consuming and it might take quite a while before you get these values to a satisfactory level. But I want to highlight that the KI and the KD values are probably going to be very small. But anyway, these are the three values that we're focusing on for this video. Here I'm showing my PID line following program running with the K values that I found to be optimal for my robot Sirius. My KP is set to 0 0.8, my KI is set to 0 0.0005, and my KD is 0 0.01. Now it's important to notice that the KI and the KD values are going to be fairly small, especially the KI which is going to be very small. And this is going to limit the influence of these integral and derivative terms over a short period of time since we're just following on a very short line. Now as far as line followers go, I'm sure what you just saw is nice and I got the PID line follower working uh, pretty decently well but it's not the best line follower that you've ever seen, right? And there are ways to improve this and I'm going to tell you how. Now I've been doing a lot of testing with the PID line follower since I made that video on how to program it last year. And I'm going to explain to you my discovery, but first I just want to go over what the uh, integral and the derivative terms of the PID line follower do, because that's going to be important to understand for what I'm about to explain. Now the integral and the derivative are, uh, those are calculus terms, but they're the I and the D in PID respectively. The P, which is the proportional part, works fine, so we're not going to be touching that or playing with that today. But um, what you need to know for the derivative, the D part, is even if you don't uh, understand calculus, you'll be able to understand this. What the derivative is concerned with is how far away am I from my target path at this exact moment. So it takes whatever your current deviation from the target path is and your last deviation from the target path is and subtracts them. So if you think about it this way, the derivative term of the PID line follower is telling you what is your error at about this exact moment and it's extremely short term. Now integral on the other hand, which is what the I stands for, is a summation of all of the errors over the period of time that the line follower has been running for. And what I found is that this is causing a little bit of a problem in the line follower. The idea behind integral is that if you sum all of the errors over time, it's going to come out to zero. Because if you stray to the right, maybe your error will be positive. If you stray to the left, your error will be negative. And over time, it's going to come to zero. But what I've found is that in practice, this doesn't exactly pan out. Um, what happens is um, the robot will stray too far, and it will make a 
correction that's slightly sharper than it needs to be back to the other side. And what happens is over time, the integral accumulates because as I said, it's adding all of the errors together. And it causes the magnitude of the robot's corrections when it's turning to increase over time. So what happens is your line follow will stay pretty stable and pretty reasonable with its corrections. But over time, as the robot strays more to the right, it's going to correct more severely to the left. And the corrections get bigger and bigger until eventually the robot makes a correction that's too steep and it can't rescue itself and it goes off of the line. Now, this is only something that you see over a long period of time, but if you saw in these clips that I just showed you, even over the short uh, line that I'm testing on, you do start to see a little bit of gain in the line followers corrections. So I found in my testing that the best way to eliminate this is to eliminate the integral term. And I know it's not a true PID line follower anymore. In reality, it's a PD line follower proportional derivative. But I found that the PD line follower without the I term is a lot more reliable. And to remove the I term from your PID line follower, you can simply set your KI value to zero. And that will eliminate that part of the equation. So let's see how our PD line follower performs. Here is the PD line follower that I just described in action. My KP value is at 0 0.6. My KI is at zero in order to remove the integral term from the line follower completely. And my KD value is set to 0 0.002. And I found that this is a little bit more reliable and a little bit more stable than a traditional PID line follower since we've removed that integral term. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every week. If you have a suggestion for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.